Hello Netrunner fans and welcome to my review of the latest big box expansion for Netrunner. That's of course Data and Destiny. This is the fourth deluxe expansion for Netrunner and it's a noteworthy milestone because now all of the factions have been involved with one of these big box releases. The first half of this video is going to look at the NBN cards that are in the release and the second half of the video is going to look at these new mini factions within the runner side of the release. We have a ton of ground to cover, so let's get right into it. And we're going to start with the three new IDs that NBN got in this box. The first ID is a new flip ID, the second that we've seen in the game. And this one's called Sync. Everything, everywhere. It's a 4015. It's a division type and it has click, flip this identity, the runner pays one credit more when spending a click to remove a tag. The other side also has click, flip this identity, and then it says you pay two credits fewer when spending a click to trash a resource. This is an interesting sort of control-oriented NBN ID, and that's something I think we're going to see quite a bit of in this box. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that this effect on both sides, it works every time the thing is being done. It's not just the first time of either of these. That's going to be pretty important, especially the runner-oriented one, because this faction tends to give the runner multiple tags, so that's probably going to cost them quite a bit. It's going to really deter their ability to deal with the tags. You could also pretty easily have the right side of it up face up when you need it. You could always flip at the end of your turn to make the runner have to pay on their turn. And you could always begin a turn with something like click to flip, trash, trash. That seems pretty decent. That said, this is an interesting new flip ID. I like that we're getting a new flip ID. I think this is reasonably strong. I think that this is definitely going to produce a very different type of NBN deck than the ones we've seen in the past. The next ID is New Angeles Soul, your news. It's a division type and it's 4515 like normal. Whenever an agenda is scored or stolen, you may play one current from HQ or archives paying its play cost. An important thing to point out is that we're going to have two new currents later in this box, so that's definitely going to have an impact. Now, in the past, I've been pretty critical of the uh, currents that NBN has. I think targeted marketing has largely been pretty bad. It, there's just not really a good thing to do with that. Predictive algorithm, kind of the same thing, just not really impactful enough. I think Manhunt is pretty clearly the winner out of all of them. But I think in general, we've just chosen better tag methods. We haven't really liked the tax associated with Manhunt because we haven't really had a control-oriented NBN. Now, like I said before, this box is really going to try to push that archetype, make that an emerging new type of NBN, and really expand the breadth of the faction. Something I could see holding this ID back, though, is just that across-the-board currents have been pretty weak. I think only really enhanced login protocol and to maybe a, a lesser extent cerebral static have ever really seen much play. And I think that's mainly just kind of the nature of currents. They're pretty easy to deal with as the runner. You can either play currents of your own or just steal an agenda. This ID is going to maybe shake that up a little bit. It's going to make the current a lot more perpetual. It's going to be easier to have one in play at almost all times. But I'm a little iffy on whether or not there is a current that has enough impact for you to build your whole deck around that. The final of these three IDs is Spark Agency, World's Wide Reach. It's a division type, 4515 like normal. The first time each turn you res an advertisement, the runner loses a credit. This is the one that I'm most excited about, and I think is the one that has the most chance of breaking out into the tournament scene. This is a very different effect than we've really seen with any other IDs, and really a whole lot of card effects. 
making the runner lose credits is something that's pretty difficult to do outside of just making the runner pay to trash something or pay to break your ice. And when you combine that with the fact that we already have several really good advertisements in Faction, pop-up window immediately comes to mind. This has just been such a good taxing piece of ice in a lot of NBN decks. We also have the relatively recent product placement. This is just such an obnoxious upgrade. It's just going to make you credits. You can res it after the runner is chosen to access on a server. You can use it to defend your centrals. This is just a solid card all around. And don't forget pad campaign. Just a decent drip economy asset. Seen a lot of play in NBN and other decks. So we already have some solid choices when it comes to these advertisements, and we're going to get a few more throughout the course of the box. I like this idea a lot. I'm hoping that it'll end up being good enough and being competitive. This is an interesting new way to tax the runner. It's very difficult to make the runner directly lose credits, and I think it's going to be pretty easy to pull off this effect like four or five times per game on absolute minimum. Now we're on to the agendas in the box. And the first one we have is the clear winner. This is 15 minutes. It's a two for one, it's unique. It has click, shuffle 15 minutes into R&D. The corp can trigger this ability while it's in the runner score area. And then it's limit one per deck. This is the type of card that's so obviously good that there isn't a whole lot to say about it. This just to me seems like you're going to play it in basically every deck. It's going to be extremely easy to score. It's going to fit into your scoring pattern really well in the fast advanced style decks. It's going to be a really powerful way to trigger the win scored, win stolen type uh, abilities like team sponsorship immediately comes to mind. Uh, it's just going to be such a strong card overall. This card is just bonkers. It's going to be played all over the place. It seems to me like this is the fourth card in your, in your NBN deck after you put in your three Astro scripts. The next agenda is a three for one. It's called Improved Tracers. It's a security subtype. All Tracer Ice have plus one strength, and the base trace strength of each subroutine is increased by one. This is the next agenda in a sort of cycle that we've seen with superior cyber walls and encrypted portals. And both of those agendas are pretty bad. I don't think they've really ever seen play, and they have a lot of problems. The first main problem that all three of these agendas have is that they're three-for-ones. And there's so few decks that can actually play three-for-ones. If you're playing a three-for-one, it's usually only like one or two of in your deck, and it usually has to compete with some of the other really powerful ones we see as neutral ones. Like Kronos Project is just a huge disruptor of Kate. We also have the Future is Now. I think that effect is just always going to be strong in basically every deck. Gilehan's Arcology is another sort of uh, economic boost for your deck. This, if you do recoup the credits, it's going to be the in, in the form of boosting trace strength which I've talked about in the past, uh, specifically in the context of making news, isn't very good and a lot of times doesn't pay off. First of all, you're going to have to have something that initiates a trace. So that's going to be a tracer piece of ice. Now we have some good ones of those, so that's not maybe a huge requirement. The second is that the runner's going to have to not have broken those ice because you're not going to get to trace them unless there's a subroutine firing. Now on top of that, the runner has to be in a situation where they were actually going to pay for the trace. And a lot of these tracer ice, the runner just runs into them and lets them fire. The plus one strength thing, I think, actually has a little more potential. Because like I said, the runner just usually breaks your tracer ice. But I don't see that being worth playing three for ones in your deck. Or even going through the hassle of scoring one. I really don't think this is going to see any play, which is unfortunate because I think that the tracer sort of thing with NBN is pretty interesting and is hugely precedented by making news, but I just really don't see this being good enough or fitting in with any of the decks that we've seen so far. 
The next agenda is a four for two. It's called Rebranding Team. It's an initiative subtype. All assets gain advertisement. This is a really, really interesting agenda that I anticipate will see virtually no play. I really like this idea of giving all of your assets advertisement subtype. That obviously fits really well with the ID that we saw earlier, Spark Agency. I think that just having lots of advertisements as options is something that's going against this card, though. We already have plenty of good advertisements, and this is only going to apply that subtype to our assets. Now, we already have Pad Campaign, and then we could hypothetically play some of the other campaigns like Adonis or Eve. A 4 for 2 to me seems way, way too hard to do for this effect. This to me seems like it'd be much more well suited as some sort of asset itself. I don't really see myself wanting to include a 4 for 2 that's going to be so extraordinarily difficult to score just so that I can get this fairly marginal effect just to help my already good ID in the form of Spark Agency. Now this is certainly not going to see play outside of Spark Agency, but I think even with Spark Agency, we'll just play enough advertisements that we don't need something like this. Next up, we have another three for one. This is Quantum Predictive Model. It's a security subtype. If Quantum Predictive Model is accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. If the runner is tagged, when Quantum Predictive Model is accessed, add it to your score area. That's what I'm talking about. Here's a three for one that's actually good enough. This effect of you being able to take it from them when they get it, especially out of like R&D or HQ, that's absolutely brutal and incentivizes you wanting to have tag effects on them. I see this having the most potential in Harpsichord, mainly just because Harpsichord has the most incentive to play lots of agendas, especially three for ones. I think that there's been quite a few decent ideas with Harpsichord floating around that are very agenda heavy and are very much based on like mid-season stuff like that. This is going to work really well with that sort of strategy. If you're planning on using a butcher shop style where you're going to tag and bag them and you're using something like mid-season to get them tagged extensively so they're going to float tags over time, you're probably going to have things like Data Raven in your deck so they might be tagged kind of temporarily during the turn. This to me seems like it's going to really fit with that style of deck and it's a powerful three for one. I really like this sort of thing on a 3-for-1. I think this is something that NBN could absolutely use. And this to me just seems like a good design that's going to see some play. Now we're moving into the assets. And the first one that we have is Lily Lockwell. She's unique and she's 2 to res, 3 to trash. And she's 4 influence. She's a character. When you res her, draw 3 cards. Then she has click remove a tag, search R&D for an operation, reveal it, and shuffle the rest of R&D, add the operation to the top of your deck. This is a pretty interesting card. I think that this could see some play. The biggest thing I'm liking about this is this remove a tag as a sort of requirement, a cost. That's a huge step in the right direction for tag design space, and I just really, really like that giving the tags some sort of alternate use other than just play only if the runner is tagged type things is just huge. And I think that's a really good idea to make the tags a sort of currency. That said, the effect would be way stronger if it didn't cost a click. In other words, if you could do it during a run. To me, that click requirement really, really puts a damper on this. I think this would be a lot more powerful if you could do it after they got tagged with like Data Raven or something like that, because then the runner's probably just going to ditch the Data Raven tag and you're not going to get to use this. Now, you are going to be able to res her to draw three cards. That's pretty cool. But with Jackson Howard being an auto include in virtually every deck, I don't see you really wanting to include her for that reason. The main thing that I can think of 
is that there are a few different NBN builds that have played the level clearances as a way to draw through their deck really fast. And a lot of times they're playing like psychographics, midseason, stuff like that. This, this card could be pretty good there. You could tutor up the midseason or the psychographics. You could also use it to get Scorched Earth if you're doing that. And it might be a way to draw cards without spending all your influence on that. The next asset is called News Team. It's zero to res, zero to trash. It's two influence. It's an ambush. If News Team is accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. When the runner accesses News Team, he or she must either take two tags or add it to his or her score area as an agenda worth negative one points. We've seen lots of ambushes throughout the history of the game. Snare, of course, is kind of the standard. And this, to me, seems like it joins the ranks of those cards as a reasonably powerful ambush effect. Again, I see this being best in Harpsichord, where you're playing more agendas than you would normally play. Your agenda points are more granular, so having this negative one point is going to mean that they're going to probably have to get a whole nother agenda. It's just going to make it a lot harder for them to score out when you're actually playing one pointers and not just a bunch of two pointers in your deck. I could also see this maybe seeing some play out of faction. If Wayland ever goes back to being kind of the main scorched earth meat damage sort of deck, this could maybe be better than snare in some cases just because it's cheaper you don't have to pay the four, and giving them two tags is really, really punishing. And the negative one point could fit pretty well with a three-point oriented scoring pattern. So I don't know. This is an interesting card. I like to see NBN get something like this. It's very different than a lot of their other tag effects. And I think that just having an ambush style tag effect like this to go along with something like Too Good to Be True makes it a lot more viable to play a sort of mass agenda style, especially out of Harpsichord. Next up is Shannon Clare. She's unique, she's 0 to res, 3 to trash, and she's 2 influence. She's a character. She has click, draw one card from the bottom of R&D, and then she has trash, search R&D or archives for an agenda and reveal it, Shuffle the rest of R&D if you searched it. Add the agenda to the bottom of R&D. Well, this is kind of tricky. I don't really know how good it is. The drawing cards from the bottom of R&D thing, the first thing I thought of was Daily Business Show. That's going to be a card that'll allow you to know what the bottom cards are of R&D are, and therefore have a lot better judgment when you're using her ability. I could also see it as a way to draw new cards without uh, drawing past or into cards that the runner has already accessed. So like if the runner runs you and they access a bunch of cards off of R&D and they're all blanks, you might want to draw off the bottom of the deck because you know that there's a bunch of blanks on top and you're kind of safe there. I really like this agenda burying effect that she has, this trash thing. I, I wish this type of effect was a lot more widespread in the game. This is going to give us a way to discard an agenda and then later put it on the bottom of R&D. We can do that mid-run, so it, once our opponent runs archives, we can fire her. That's a good effect, and I like. I think it's a nice touch that it also lets you do it on R&D, so you could tutor up some big point agenda and hide it on the bottom. This is definitely not blowing my mind, and I'm not sure this is going to see a whole lot of play, but I do think this is an interesting little defensive effect, and it's exploring an interesting place in the design space. Next up, we have Victoria Jenkins. She's unique. She's 3 to res, 5 to trash. She's 5 influence. She's an executive. The runner has one fewer click to spend during his or her turn. If she's trashed while being accessed, Add her to the runner score area as an agenda worth two points. I'm kind of mixed on this. First of all, that effect is really powerful. The runner losing a click, uh, having one fewer click to spend, that's always going to be good. It's always going to be a big tax. And I immediately thought of combining this with RP, just because then they're going to have to spend basically an extra click just to run on her server. 
But five influence, that's really the thing that's, I think, going to keep this card in the box. I can't really see an NBN deck wanting to play this admittedly very powerful effect. Most NBN decks, the game doesn't go long enough where this is really going to be all that great. And while NEH does sort of have a click tax in the form of kind of spamming servers that the runner has to go check to make sure they're not like Astros and stuff, I don't really see this being the type of thing that you're going to want to include in your deck. I think it's kind of a liability with this two agenda points executive effect. I don't know. This to me feels like it's more of a an HB or Genteki card, but five influence, man, I don't really see being able to afford that in any of those decks. Next up we have Reality 3D, and that's spelled out. It's zero to res, six to trash, it's two influence. It's illicit, which means when you res it, you take a bad pub. When your turn begins, gain one credit, or two credits if the runner is tagged. So there's some obvious comparisons to draw with marked accounts and pad campaign, maybe a few other cards with this. And to me, it seems like this is probably only going to be worth it if you're able to pretty consistently get the two credits if they're tagged thing. Giving them a bad pub, that's going to kind of make this five to trash, except even worse. And that's pretty comparable to a marked accounts that you don't have to click every once in a while. We've seen kind of in the past a few things in NBN that are related to bad pub. So maybe if we get more cards in that space, we could see things like broadcast square, maybe seeing a little bit of play. That card I never really seen resed or even in a deck list. But if we saw enough bad pub and illicit oriented effects, maybe that could become a realistic thing. I could also see this being played out of faction if you had some reason to accumulate bad pub. Like if we see cards that somehow benefit from bad pub or things like that, this could maybe be an enabler for that. I'm not really seeing a good use for this card right now, but I'm glad that it's in the card pool. This seems like a reasonable card. And I'm hoping that maybe in the future this will make a little more sense. Now we're moving on to the ice. And the first one that we have is Archangel. It's 4 to res, 6 strength, code gate, tracer, ambush. And it's 4 influence. If Archangel is accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. If you pay 3 when the runner accesses Archangel, he or she immediately encounters it. Ignore this ability if Ar Archangel is accessed from Archives, and it has subroutine Trace 6, if successful, add one installed runner card to his or her grip. This is certainly breaking some new ground. This is the first piece of ice we've ever seen with the ambush mechanic, and I think in general that's just a really good idea from a design perspective. It allows you to consolidate the cards that you play to de defend your R&D, and then also your ice. So it's going to potentially free up some slots in theory. This Trace 6 thing, this is a pretty sweet effect to have on the ambush and just to have on a huge code gate. We get to pick the card that gets put back in the runner's grip. That's going to be powerful in a lot of situations. We can put one of their expensive icebreakers back. We put their expensive console back. We just pick their most expensive card, and now they've got to reinstall that. Cost a click and a bunch of credits. Again, this seems like a control-oriented NBN card where you're looking, you're willing to spend these three credits to defend R&D with this effect, and you're also going to have enough credits to make this trace matter. The four influence is going to keep this out of most of the existing kind of big agenda uh, glaciery control decks. So I'm not sure really how this card is going to end up seeing play. If we do see an emerging NBN control archetype, which is definitely something that this box is trying to create, I could see this card being played as a one or two of. It's a pretty big code gate. It's fairly inexpensive to res, and it has a fairly consequential subroutine based on a huge trace. The next piece of ice is called Newshound. 
It's two to res, four strength, century tracer, and it's two influence. If a current is active, it gains end of the run after all of its other subroutines, and then it has one subroutine, which is trace three. If successful, give the runner a tag. We have no shortage of effects like this in the game. There are a lot of these low-end, uh, in terms of cost, centuries, that have some sort of trace that gives the runner a tag. We already have quite a few of these, so it seems to me like the obvious advantage of this over something like, say, Gutenberg, is this current effect. So if you're playing some deck that already has several currents, this being a two subroutine with end the run uh, century is going to be way stronger than just this kind of generic trace thing. That to me says soul. The ID that we looked at earlier definitely could uh, have that current active. A lot of the time we have a way to kind of reinvigorate the current if it gets trashed. So maybe this could see a little play in there. Since we already have Data Raven and Gutenberg, this to me seems like it's not worth it unless you're getting value out of the current thing. And since currents are generally pretty bad, I don't anticipate this seeing a lot of play. The next piece of ice is called Resistor. It's zero to res, zero strength, it's a barrier tracer, and it's two influence. Resistor has plus one strength for each tag the runner has, then it has subroutine, Trace 4, if successful, end of the run. This is a barrier tracer. We don't have a whole lot of those. And it's 0 to res, so it almost certainly could see some play just for being a cheap, sometimes end the run barrier. The biggest thing I'm seeing about this is that the plus 1 strength for each tag, that's really just not going to matter unless they have a ton of tags. And really the only way to do that is mid-season replacements. If you can land a mid-season, you're in such good shape that it doesn't really matter if some cheap barrier in your deck is stronger. The biggest thing that's holding this back for me is that it loses to Corroder just like our other low-end barrier, Wraparound. But it doesn't have all the advantages of Wraparound where it's big against like AI breakers and stuff like that. And this resistor dies to Parasite in a way that Wraparound doesn't at least prior to them having a fractor. So I don't know, this is maybe a complement piece of ice to wrap around, but I definitely don't see you replacing wrap around with this, and I think that you probably have enough low-end barriers that this is not going to see a lot of play. The next piece of ice is called Special Offer. It's Wonder Res, 3 Strength, 2 Influence. It's a trap, and it's an advertisement type. It has 1 subroutine, the Corp gains 5 credits, then Trash Special Offer. Here's another advertisement option for our Spark Agency deck. That's going to give us both Pop-Up Window and potentially this. That's quite a bit of ice that we could play, not to mention all the other cards we talked about as being advertisements. I do like that this has enough strength that it doesn't immediately get killed by Parasite, I've complained about that endlessly when it comes to these trap-type ice. I think a lot of them just aren't that great because you can instant speed Parasite with a clone chip. This at least has three strengths, so they're not going to be able to do that. I don't know, this is okay. I think it's really only an option in Spark Agency. I don't see you playing this outside of that. The next piece of ice is called TLDR. It's one to res, four strength, it's two influence. It's a code gate. It has one subroutine. When the runner encounters the next piece of ice during this run, that ice gains a second copy of each subroutine on it after the original for the remainder of the encounter. This is a perfect example of a cool idea that's just a bad card. I don't really think any ice that rely on other ice to do something are good, I think almost universally those are bad, with very, very few exceptions. And unfortunately, I think this falls right into this mix. This is substantially worse than Chum, in my opinion. Chum does something if they just let the subs fire. That definitely matters. It also gives a bonus to Strength, which I think is usually going to be more of a tax than doubling the subroutines will. The thing with this is you're going to have to draw some impactful 
piece of ice that has meaningful subroutines, and you're going to have to have that in play before you install this thing. So you really rely on, on drawing the cards at the right time. You can't play too many copies of this TLDR because if you draw them early, they're useless. And then there's a bunch of subroutines where it doubling it doesn't really have much of an impact. Like if they were going to float tags against a tracer subroutine, they could just take both of the tags and really that didn't do a whole lot. It would have been better to just have another piece of ice instead of TLDR. And also, like, the same thing's basically true with end of the run. Like, if you just double their end the runs, well, their run seriously ends. Man, this is such a cool idea that just, it's just not good enough to really see play. The last piece of ice is called Turnpike. This is two to res, three strength, and two influence. It's a century tracer. When the runner encounters Turnpike, he or she loses a credit, and then it has subroutine... Trace 5, if successful, give the runner a tag. I'm not really sure why we needed two Gutenberg clones in this box, but this one's actually pretty good. I really like the win encountered effect. Like I've said many times, that effect is really, really good and has generally been pretty hard to deal with. Win encountered is difficult to deal with because you can't just break it. So this is always going to be a one credit tax no matter what. Unless they don't have any credits. That's the only case where, where it won't matter. The trace is a really high number, which is nice. But this is also a three-strength piece of ice, so it's just going to get crushed by Mimic. Now, I don't see that being a huge problem. I think this is definitely good enough to see play as maybe a couple copies. Like, I think you're definitely not going to cut all of your Gutenbergs for this. I see some sort of mix where you play maybe one or two Turnpikes and one or two Gutenbergs. This is not the most exciting piece of ice, but it is one that I think is playably good, and this, I would imagine, is going to make the ice mix of a fair number of decks. Next up is one of the clear standouts in the box. This is 24-7 News Cycle. It's an operation, it's zero to play, it's three influence. As an additional cost to play it, forfeit an agenda, Resolve the win scored ability on an agenda in your score area. We could come up with a list of cool things that this works with, but realistically there's only one that matters, and that's breaking news. With this, we're able to give the runner two tags, and we don't have to trace them, they don't have to have made a run, they don't have to have stolen an agenda, none of that. We just straight up tag them, if we have a breaking news in the score area. And kind of insult to injury is that the tags don't get removed like they would with breaking news. Now that doesn't really matter because you're just going to flatline them the turn that you play this. This is hands down one of the easiest ways to tag the runner in the whole game. I would say only the breaking news is easier. And this is just going to be a huge game changer for Butcher Shop. This is going to make it a lot easier to tag the runner, make the uh, combo kill mechanism a lot more straightforward and easy to pull off. This is just going to be an absolute monster in Butcher Shop. Basically, all they have to do is score a breaking news and then any other agenda because you're going to have to forfeit one. So they need an agenda to forfeit and they need a breaking news in their score area. And once they have that, they have a zero-cost way to tag you. I anticipate a Harpsichord Studios-based Butcher Shop deck being really, really hard to deal with in the upcoming months. I think you'll play lots of agendas, you'll probably play some of that news team, and then you're going to focus on just flatlining them with this. But you're still going to have the Astro Train to fall back on uh, as kind of a plan B. In my limited testing with this card, I've found the deck to be extremely consistent and extremely fast, and I think that this is going to be a huge player in the upcoming metagame. At very least, I think this is going to bring back the use of Plascrete if we weren't already there. Next up is an operation called Add Blitz. It's X to play, it's one influence, it's a double. As an additional cost to play it, spend a click, that's the double part. Install and res, paying all costs, X 
advertisements from archives and or HQ, if able. This is sort of an interns for advertisements, and this could maybe see a little bit of play in the Spark Agency deck. The one thing that I think kind of sucks about this is that Spark Agency is only going to trigger the first time. So, in other words, we're not going to make them lose one if we install and res a whole ton of advertisements. Special Offer seems pretty good because it it dies and then it's going to be able to come back easily. I could maybe see things like product placement being pretty good with this or other trashables that the, the runner might hit. Maybe if they parasite our pop-up window or something like that. This seems like a decent option for Spark Agency. I think it's going to be pretty hard to use outside of that, though. Next up is a new current called Media Blitz. It's two to play. It's three influence. It's not trash until another current is played or an agenda is stolen by the runner. That's the current part. Choose an agenda in the runner's score area. Media Blitz gains the text of that agenda. This card is seriously such a mess. Not only is it really confusing as to what this card does, but once you understand how it works, you realize that it's terrible. Now, the reason why it's confusing is that there's a ton of different agendas that reference themselves in their text, and pretty much across the board, this card does not work with those. So, an easy example would be NAPD Contract. NAPD contract says that it costs four more to steal, so it's reasonable to believe that if you had a Media Blitz active copying NAPD contract, that it would make the next NAPD contract cost eight to steal, but that's not the case. And there's been some clarification directly from Lucas on this, so pretty much the only thing that this card is going to work with is either agendas that have some sort of passive ability, like the fragments or like mandatory upgrades or something like that, or agendas that have some sort of activated ability, so like Gilahan's Arcology. And I can't think of a single case where you'd be willing to include this three influence current in your deck to do that. Maybe in the future, if we get some sort of awesome passive ability agenda that it would be worth like trying to give up to then fire off media blitz this could see some play but this is so confusing and I, I just there's so many rules problems with this card this is just a mess of a card I, I don't think this should have been printed next up we have an operation called the all-seeing eye and this is the letter I not the part of the body it's one to play it's one influence Play only if the runner is tagged. Trash all resources. The runner can remove one bad publicity to prevent this. This is a pretty cool new take on the play only if the runner is tagged effects. I think something like this needs to exist in the game. And it's especially timely when you consider that the data leak reversal paparazzi decks have started to gain some traction and are frankly not that fun to play against. This is going to be a pretty interesting solution to those. That said, a lot of them are playing as Valencia, which starts with a bad pub, so you're going to have to come packing multiple copies of this if you want it to work. I kind of like this. I think this is the type of thing that needs to exist in the game. I think if tags could get into a less binary um, state of affairs, if they were less about Scorched Earth, then this could become a huge bomb. This to me seems like a card that's probably going to be worth including in some decks. Trashing resources is really powerful. The cost is right. This to me seems like a good NBN card. Next up is another current. This one is called Surveillance Sweep. It's two to play. It's three influence. It's not trash till another current is played or an agenda is stolen. The runner must spend credits first for each trace during a run. There's a huge limitation on this thing, which is that it only works during runs. So you're not going to be able to use it on like mid-season or something like that. This to me maybe could see play with the uh, soul ID that we saw earlier and a lot of the tracer ice. 
The Tracer Ice seem like the easiest way to abuse this since it has to be during a run, and they do get a lot more powerful if the runner can't just break them. Well, that's kind of been the core problem with the Tracer Ice is that the runner can just break them. So I'm not totally sure that this is going to be good enough, especially at two cost. But this is a powerful and interesting way to maybe make those Tracer Ice a little more competitive. Now we move on to the upgrades. And the first one that we have is called Keegan Lane. He's unique. He's zero to res, three to trash, three influence. He's a sysop. He has trash, remove one tag, trash one program. Use this ability only during a run on this server. This is a pretty awesome move for the design space. I talked earlier about how I really, really like this remove a tag as a cost. And this one has the big advantage of you being able to do it during a run. You actually have to do it during a run. But the big thing about that is that you can use it with some of the kind of temporary tag effects. So I'm talking about like Data Raven or something like that where the runner's going to get tagged and then they're going to ditch the tag before the end of the turn. This, if they take that Data Raven tag, you're going to be able to fire this off, ditch that tag, and hit one of their programs. And that's going to be really brutal. Corp could really use some new ways to kill programs like this, especially with non-ice mechanisms. I was really excited for Marcus Beatty for that reason, and I think this guy is another pretty good effect in that line. I like that he has a decent trash cost, he's going to survive long enough to get to your server. I think the biggest challenge with this guy is just going to be finding an NBN deck that is willing to play this. I think if you're going to be spending influence on this, you'd probably rather have Caprice or Beatty or even Ash. If you're just looking for something to defend a server like that, maybe if there is a control NBN deck like I've talked about throughout this video, this could be a big staple for that deck. Next up, we have a new region. This is Rutherford Grid. It's 0 to res, 4 to trash. It's 2 influence. It's a region. The base trace strength of each trace during a run on this server is increased by 2 Limit one region per server. I'm not impressed with this at all. I've talked about a lot of times in the past how increasing traces isn't necessarily a benefit or it's certainly not a real economic benefit. The big problem is, A, the runner can just break the ice. So if they break the ice, obviously increasing the base trace doesn't matter. But the other thing, and I think maybe the more important thing, is if the trace attempt gets high enough, the runner probably just won't oppose it, and then you didn't get any advantage. So really the only time you're getting an economic advantage from this is when the runner does have to compete and actually spend credits versus your trace. And it seems to me like that's really going to only matter with like maybe Data Raven or like one of the Ichis or something like that. And I can't really see including this region in my deck just to make those already good cards better. Now we have two neutral cards. And the first one I think is by far the biggest standout of the whole uh, corpse side of the box. And that's Global Food Initiative. This is a 5 for 3. It costs 1 influence. It's an initiative. Global Food Initiative is worth 1 fewer agenda point while in the runner's score area. This is an absolute monster and something that the, the game has needed for a really long time. I've talked in the past about how 5 for 3s are almost universally terrible, and the ones that are good enough are things like Future Perfect, where they're difficult to steal. This isn't difficult to steal, but it's only worth 2 points. And the big thing about that is it's still going to count towards your 20 points that you're required to play as a three-pointer. So that sort of lowers your agenda density. It kind of effectively lowers your agenda density while still giving you the ability to play a five for three. This is absolutely monstrous and a huge game changer for Glacier decks. 
I could see this also seeing play just as a way to lower your agenda density uh, if you just throw it in a deck to do that. But I think realistically, this is going to be a huge boost for Glacier strategies, especially ones that don't have something like Future Perfect. I, this could be big for Wayland, especially like Blue Sun. This could be big for HB, uh, especially like ETF, Big Glacier style. I think this is going to be a big addition to the Glacier, Glacier lineup, and it seems to me like this is pretty much the auto-include 5 for 3, unless you have a really good reason to play something else, or you already have Future Perfect. Next up, we have a neutral asset. This is called Launch Campaign. It's 1 to res, it's 2 to trash, it's 0 influence, it's an advertisement. Place 6 from the bank on it when it's resed, Trash it when there's no credits left. When your turn begins, take two credits from it. Here's a neat little addition to the Corp Economy lineup. I think overall this is probably not going to be good enough for a lot of decks, but it's really nice to have some low-end economy effect like this in the form of an asset. We don't have a ton of those, and the ones that we do have are like Pad Campaign or some of the zero-cost ones that are faction-specific. So we don't exactly have a card that is neutral that fills this role. I think that this has some potential with Spark Agency, just because it's a cheap advertisement that also fits into your economy. This is maybe not the most exciting card, but I think it's a good addition to the card pool. The last Corp card in Data and Destiny is a piece of ice called Assassin. It's 7 to res, it's 5 strength, it's 0 influence. It's a Century Destroyer AP Tracer. It has two subroutines. The first one is Trace 5. If successful, do 3 net damage. And the second one is Trace 4. If successful, trash a program. I really like this piece of ice. This is something that I think the card pool has needed for a long time, which is a neutral piece of ice that's pretty high-end and just very generally useful. I think there are a lot of Glacier-style decks that are going to consider playing one or two of these. It's no influence. It has a really big impact if they face-check it. It's really expensive to deal with as a two-subroutine five-strength century. And at seven cost, it's pretty reasonable to play. I think that Blue Sun probably wins the most from this. Just because Blue Sun can then redeploy this and have another scary face check piece of ice. But then if they want to leave this resed and deployed on a server, it's going to be really expensive to deal with. This is a great addition to the card pool. It's maybe not the most exciting card in the box, but this is something that I think a lot of decks, especially Glacier decks, are going to consider. Just because it's a really good big piece of ice. That's going to do it for the NBN half of Data and Destiny. I think this box has some really good ideas. I think it's pushing the boundaries of the card pool in some interesting ways. Ambush, ice, tags are a resource. The runner can spin bad pub to avoid this effect. Stuff like that. I think that there's some really good ideas in this box. I think realistically, Butcher Shop is probably the big winner here. It's going to maybe evolve so that there are several different forms of it. I think the Harpsichord 24-7 thing is going to be insanely good. I think Glacier also was a big winner with both Assassin and Global Food Initiative and maybe a few other cards. I'm hoping that maybe Spark Agency or possibly Sync become good enough as, as kind of a control archetype. I'm not super confident that that'll happen. I think NBN, as it is, is going to be extremely hard to get away from the fast advance plus butcher shop sort of archetypes. But there's enough groundwork here that maybe some future releases could make some, one of those decks competitive. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the subscribe button and the button that looks like a thumbs up. And make sure you tune into part two. We're going to look at three mini factions for the runner. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. Definitely pushing the boundaries of the design space on the runner side as well. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you over in part two.